everyone, this is Kevin from Fort Orange Woodworking. Today I'm going to show you how to make this rustic serving tray, which has enough space for two glasses of wine, two bottles, and this cool rattle bottom, which is a, a neat feature. Um, all in all, this little project should cost you less than a weekend and about $6 in hardware because this is completely made from reclaimed pallet wood. So, if you like this video and or project, please remember to like and subscribe and I will see you in the shop. Thanks. Anytime you're using reclaimed wood for a project, it's really important to check the boards thoroughly for any nails or bits of metal that might have been left behind. These can do serious damage to your equipment, not to mention be a significant risk for injury. So before you start any reclaimed wood project, make sure to check those boards. Once I think that I've removed all of the nail heads and bits of metal from the boards, I'm going to give them one quick inspection before I start to run them to the planer. I'm also going to take one final step and run my metal detector over each side of the board. This is a little wizard that I picked up from Amazon for pretty cheap and it saved my planer blades more than once. Next, I'm gonna give each of these boards a clean cut so that they have a fresh edge on one side and also give me an approximation of um, how much wood I'm gonna use so I don't waste any. These are all gonna be going through my planer so I'm gonna get as much clean wood out of this as I can. I'm gonna be running these boards through the planer even though I'm going for a rustic look on these serving trays. By running them through the planer, it's gonna uh, clean up a lot of the mess that's on top of these old pallet boards. And also, and more importantly, gonna give them a nice uniform thickness, which will make them easier to work with. After I get both sides through the planer and give them a uniform thickness, they're gonna come over to the joiner. And you're gonna notice that I've got these in um, stacks of about four or five. Now, if I was doing a more precision job, these would be going through individually, but since this is going to um, be a rustic look, I can get away with running these through in a stack, and they don't have to have perfect ed edges, and I only need one. Once I get one clean edge on the joiner, I can bring these back over to the table saw and put the clean edge against the fence on the table saw. That way I can start ripping these down to the desired width that I need for the rest of the project. I'm gonna have to do this for each board individually. Now I can start bringing these boards back over to the miter saw and I can start to cut them to length for the different pieces that I'm gonna need for the project. I'm gonna use as few boards as possible on this project so that I can get as much out of each piece of wood as I can. I've switched out my table saw blade for a dado stack, which is going to be used to cut channels in the long boards of the tray. I could do this in any number of different ways. I could do individual cuts along with just a regular table saw blade if that's all you've got, but I've got the dado stack, so I'm going to use it to, to cut some nice clean channels for the tray board to rest in. A quick dry fit of all my pieces before I start assembling is going to help me to see if there's any major issues with my cuts, uh, any any problems with the wood that I that I might have overlooked or missed. 
So I'm just going to put these together in a dry fit, make sure all my ends and, and channels line up, and see if this is ready for assembly. These pieces here are going to be used for the bottom slats of the tray. Before I go over to the miter saw and cut these to the correct length, I need to make sure that I have all of the width that I need to fit the space of the tray itself. So quick uh, measure here and a quick cut on the miter saw and then they'll be ready to go. I am using a combination of corner clamps as well as regular clamps to get these ends to meet up before I begin assembling them. I had a little bit of trouble earlier, so this is uh, my second or third attempt on these, but the corner clamps seem to help keep these in place quite a bit. Once the glue is dry, I can take my clamps off and I can start to measure to see where my nails are going to go. Make sure that you mark your nails in places where they're not going to split the wood or go through the bottom without securing them um, beneath the tray itself. I'm using nails for this project, however, they're going to be largely decorative. Um, so to make sure that I don't split this very thin wood, it's only about three-eighths of an inch thick at this point, I'm going to make sure that I drill some pilot holes for the nails that are just a little bit smaller than the nail itself so that the wood doesn't split. Then I can start tapping my nails in. I like to pick these up from discount stores and budget stores whenever I'm in the area, see what they have in stock and uh, keep a good supply of them on hand. I'm going to be applying some glue here to the end pieces, but keep in mind because I want the middle slats to rattle and move around freely, I'm only gluing the end pieces into the tray itself. Everything else is going to kind of float in that channel, but the end pieces, if they don't get glued down, um, it might rattle too much and your um, tray slats might pop out and you'll have to just pop them back in. It's a little bit of a pain. So I only glue the end pieces in. A little bit of a fast forward assembly here. I like to put the slats in from bottom to top and use the clamps as I go. That way they don't fall out as I'm trying to stack them one on top of each other. They gotta stay stacked and in that channel until I can get that last end piece on and glued. Then it's over to the hole saw, and I'm using my hole saw and my power drill for this. You could use your drill press if you have one. However, if you're going to use a, a hand saw, this can get a little rough going, so make sure that you clamp that piece to a secure workspace, otherwise that board is just going to spin around and possibly fly off and hit you.
Then it's over to my drill press where I have um, a, a drum sander set up for it. I could have used my hole saw during this stage of the process too, but I didn't think of it. I usually use my, my drill for control, but either way would have worked. This is fine for me. Next, I'm marking my locations for the channel that the wine stems are going to rest in. Make sure that these are centered and even and that they're not too wide, otherwise the glasses will rattle, rattle around instead of staying secure. I'm going to be using my jigsaw to get a rough cut for the channel at this point. You could go straight to your router table if you feel comfortable doing so, but for this one, I like to use my jigsaw just to get a rough idea of um, where that channel is going to be before I move over to the router table. Next, it's over to the router table where I'm going to set my workpiece on a straight edge and I'm going to get some nice clean lines here just to make sure that that channel is perfectly straight. You could hand sand this if you don't have a router table. I've done that before. Just take a piece of sandpaper and glue it to a pencil or a wooden dowel and you can get a pretty straight line just by hand sanding it with a little bit of tool manipulation. One last dry fit of these top pieces before I nail these in and bring them over to my router table for some finishing. I didn't get to catch this on camera, fortunately for me, because it was a pretty big mistake and I think there was a little bit of swearing in it. So you're going to hear me explain in the next clip exactly what I did. So, full disclosure, I made a mistake and it was a pretty big one. Uh, I was attempting to put a quarter inch round over on uh, the edge of one of the top pieces and I went a little too far with the router bit when I raised it up. I cut into the wood a little too far and when I did that I went right over my brass nails and took the tops right off. My brass nails were way too close to the edge to be going to the uh, full extent of, of the router bit. So a little bit of a miscalculation. However, one of the, the, the big things about woodworking is you're gonna make mistakes and you need to find creative ways to fix them. So for this one, this piece is total garbage. I can't use this anymore. This is going to the burn pile. It's split in half when I try to uh, take it off of the, the piece. This one, however, I was able to salvage. Uh, I took I took it off the top, I took the nails out, I threw away the ones that the router went through, and I planed this down just a little bit to take off the, uh, the messy edge created by over-routing, and it, while I did that at the same time I threw another 5 inch wide piece of pine from a different uh, project stock that I had. So these are now the same thickness, the only thing I really need to do with it is recut my holes and my router channel. So I'm going to do that now. All right, we're back in business. Didn't take me long to make a second one of these. So I can use my original pilot holes. This one can go right back where it was and we can um, finish this up. Okay, time for everyone's favorite step, finishing. I'm going to be using boiled linseed oil to finish this serving tray. Number one, because it is food safe. And number two, because it gives a really nice golden color to um, the project, especially with pallet wood. If you've never used boiled linseed oil before, I highly recommend that you pick some up and try it. It's a, it's a really get great finishing product.
And there you have it, one finished serving tray. Should only take you a few hours to assemble. Real cheap, only gonna cost you a couple bucks in hardware and finishing product. Please remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Much appreciated. Thanks everyone, take care.